number of armed and violent neo-Nazis is on the rise. The far-right movement is diversifying, attracting growing numbers of students and middle-class professionals. Revelations of mass murder and hate crimes force the German authorities to admit they've done too little for too long. Is Germany's Nazi past preventing it from fighting right-wing extremism now? Last November, amongst the wreckage of this burnt-out flat, police unpacked one of the biggest scandals of Germany's post-war history. The flat had been home to Beate Chipper, Uwe Bernhardt and Uwe Mundlos. Known neo-Nazi activists, they'd been on the run for years, remaining at large despite carrying out, by their own admission, at least nine murders and a number of bombings. Beate Chipper turned herself into the police. Her accomplices were found dead in a van in an apparent double suicide. Police found a version of Monopoly that Beata had been selling. Germany's intelligence service showed Newsnight the game. Concentration camps are the most desirable properties on the board. But this is what shocked the German public most. The trio left this homemade DVD rather bizarrely using the Pink Panther cartoon character to boast that they'd been on a 10-year killing spree of racially motivated murders nationwide. The trio say they acted to serve the German people and their country. They sign off as a National Socialist Underground, or NSU, echoing the National Socialism of Hitler's Germany. Police say they had no idea. They'd blamed those murders on the Turkish Mafia. Newsnight has seen a secret internal report revealing serious blunders by law enforcement agencies. They'd had the group under close surveillance for years, but never took decisive action, allowing them to go into hiding and remain underground. Why weren't they stopped before they began to kill? Helmut Röver was the local intelligence chief at the time. In this moment, in my eyes, it was necessary to arrest those people at once. In my eyes. Police did not. Why? I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Uh, we thought um, that we had them uh, two or three times and it was not possible to arrest them. I can't explain it. I can't, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Well, we did keep asking him, but he had no answers for us. Allegations have been made in Germany, not just of incompetence, but of right-wing sympathies inside the country's secret services and police force, something the institutions vehemently deny. Here in Germany, it's impossible to discuss far-right or even nationalist activity in isolation outside the context of this country's Nazi past. Germany's post-war constitution was very much written in the vein of never again. So the story of the nationalist socialist underground throws up some disturbing questions. Just how is it that a group of militant neo-Nazis was allowed to flourish and just how popular and how powerful are the far right and nationalist extremists in Germany today? Human rights groups say more than 180 people have been killed in right-wing attacks in Germany over the last 20 years. Neo-Nazis have murdered more people in post-war Germany than any other single group, including Islamists and the far left. But this is not reflected in official data. The German government admits mistakes have been made. Martin is a former neo-Nazi leader. He's now left the movement and asked us to hide his identity. He says the neo-Nazi trio's murderous exploits should have come as no surprise. The militant scene has always said we need people who are willing and able and trained in case it comes to civil war. The scene is armed. It's military. This does lead to people being killed. Weapons training is carried out in secret. 
In the Arab world, for instance, with freedom movements there, the right-wing scene sees itself as a freedom movement. Martin was part of a growing movement of secretive far-right groups in Germany called the Free Forces. No longer only rooted in the past, these groups tend not to call themselves Nazi or neo-Nazi, but rather the Free Forces. They're attracting a new kind of crowd, including students, the middle classes and intellectuals. They're harnessing social media and using new modern forms and means and reasons for protest. When it comes to them, one intelligence agent told me the security services here in Germany really are out of their depth. This group, the Immortals, is part of the new crowd. Anti-globalization, anti-capitalist and anti-democratic, they warn of the impending extinction of the German people. Hard for the authorities to catch, they use text messaging to organize spontaneous demos across the country, like this one in their propaganda video. After 15 minutes on the street, they've gone. The leadership is always trying to attract members of the so-called upper classes, students who one day can act as lawyers or doctors for the scene, really do something to help the movement. You'd never imagine that those sorts of people supported the far right, and they may deny their affiliation in public, but they are very much part of the movement, more so now than ever before. But what exactly do they want? Far-right activists are somewhat camera-shy. They say they're hounded by police and hemmed in by post-war German laws. We went to Berlin's best-known neo-Nazi pub, The Executioner, to see if we could tempt the punters to talk. They've never let a camera crew in here before, but after a couple of Himmler cocktails, Uwe Dreisch, the former head of a now-banned neo-Nazi group, sat down with us. Where are we? We are... Who are we? We are nationalists. We care deeply about our fatherland. We don't like the state that exists here right now in Germany. We want to rebuild our country for our citizens, the German people. We want to protect our culture, our country, our religion. In Britain, you too are proud of your country, but here I, as a German, am a second-class citizen. This is because we live with eternal war guilt here in Germany. Others get preferential treatment, not us Germans. Those outside here who say this pub is full of evil Nazis, how would they know? They're afraid to talk to us. They try to ban us. The British owner of the pub asked us to hide his identity, to protect his family. He was amongst many that night who complained to us about strict German laws they believe are used to persecute the far right. If the German government makes laws that you can't express your, your freedom of speech, then there will be an uprising. It will happen. Um, just because it will be forbidden, it will happen. Uh, if they let these laws go, then people will be a lot more freer, they will say what they think, there will be more discussion, and uh, they won't have as many political problems as they do today. What many lawmakers say they don't like is that the far right rejects the German Federal Republic. The nationalists want a new order in Germany, non-democratic, non-multicultural. In the meantime, some are establishing what they call national liberated zones, dotted across the country. We're on our way to Jamal. It is the only village that really has been completely taken over by neo-Nazis in Germany to date. And they have all the houses now except for one. They've pretty much forced out all the other villagers. In the middle of the village is this Nazi Germany-styled mural, proclaiming that the area is free, social and national. The German authorities recently forced the villagers here to take down a signpost pointing towards Hitler's birthplace. People here weren't particularly pleased to see us or keen to talk to us. Prior to coming here, I tried to organize an interview with the leading family of the village, but they weren't keen on our camera. 
You find liberated zones in German towns and cities too. There have been cases of riots, arson and murder in the far right's efforts to cleanse those areas, a couple of streets or a sprawling housing estate, getting rid of all those they regard as political enemies. Immigrants, ethnic minorities, liberals or left-wingers. Far-right groups also run summer camps for children and families, like this one in North Germany, filmed a few years ago. This youth organization was later banned. The German Interior Ministry said it was indoctrinating children in Nazi ideology, as well as giving them military training. But the courtship of youngsters continues. The nationalists run youth clubs and sports clubs. They're playing the social card in the current economic crisis, offering welfare advice and family assistance, hoping to attract new supporters. The NPD is the legal political wing of the far right. It has elected representatives in two out of Germany's 16 state parliaments. That is grob skizziert, that Udo Pasteurs is the deputy leader of the NPD nationwide and its leader in the regional parliament of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. German children need the land. We want to keep the German people alive with our own biological vitality so that tomorrow and the day after Germany still earns the name Germany because Imagine a country called Germany that's filled only with Africans, with us importing nice little sweet nigger children. The German government says it's looking to ban the NPD because of the party's association with extremists. Its alleged links with the neo-Nazi killer trio, the National Socialist Underground, and NPD members questioning of the Holocaust. I asked Udo Pasteurs what he thought of Hitler. Look here, if one speaks about a historical figure, it's impossible to do so during a short interview. I could ask lots of people what they thought of Hitler. They'd be able to answer me in very few words. But those are emotions, not facts. I don't ask people in Dresden what they think of Bomber Harris. But you're totally avoiding my question, what do you think of Hitler and what of the six million Jews? The six million Juden gestorben sind, also ermordet wurden. Let me point out to you that in Germany you are punishable by law if you don't accept the authorities' version of what happened at Auschwitz-Birkenau. I ask for your understanding. I do not wish to talk about these issues. I do not live in a free country. German nationalists say they represent the German people. Most Germans insist they certainly do not. But statistics indicate the euro crisis and wider economic woes mean increasing numbers are sympathetic to the anti-immigrant Germans first message espoused by the far right. This was the state memorial service last month for the victims of the National Socialist Underground. Just a few days before, more than 2,000 neo-Nazis marched in Dresden. At the memorial, there was a profound sense of remorse, with political promises to crack down on the far right. But as the story fades from the national headlines, human rights groups say they're concerned the neo-Nazi issue will be neglected again. It is a minority movement. But Germany's nationalists and the so-called free forces are a force that needs to be dealt with. The question is how.